not gonna lie to you guys, it's been about three days since we even looked at this piece of wood. And that's because I just cannot decide what I wanna do with it. On one hand, I'm thinking of doing a seating bench. The idea is that it can be used in a mudroom. So you come in, sit down on this and take off your shoes. But I'm leaning more towards doing a hall table. The thing about that is that means the joinery on the legs is gonna to have to be a little bit more complicated to stop the whole thing from racking because it will be top heavy. But I kind of feel like this wood deserves to be raised up a bit and shown off. So I'm gonna go ahead with the hall table. That's gonna be the game plan for now. If I get stuck along the way in the joinery, on the legs isn't working, then I'll revert back to the small sitting bench. You of course know exactly what it's gonna be because the name is in the title. So hopefully it's not gonna take me too long to get to that spot. What I've done there is cut the top surface of this to have two square parallel edges and they are 90 degrees to this edge here. The idea is for this to sit up against either a wall or the back of a couch and that's what this flat edge is going to be. So this will be up against the wall, this is going to be the front edge. The next step is a bit of a chicken and egg situation. I need to cut a rabbit out of the underneath of this curve and that has got to match the size of the legs going in. But I don't have the legs yet, so I can't match that out, but I wanted to cut that and base the legs off of this gap, but I need to mill the legs up first. So I think what I'm gonna do is start with the legs, I'll get the legs made, mark those off on here, and then cut the, the rabbit into the slab. The trick here is that the legs can be made from stock that I can get anywhere. This can only be cut once. to dry overnight so they are good and solid. The next thing is to run them through the thickness so to clean up the surfaces, ready for another glue up. All right, I think that's enough glue up montage for one video, so let's move on. As soon as all the glue had dried, I cut and trimmed this leg to size. So the next thing is to cut the slab to accept this leg. Remember what I was saying earlier about only having one shot at this cut? This is the bit that I love and hate about woodworking. I need to make sure that this all fits proper because I only get one chance. Because of this knot, I couldn't get the sled down far enough to cut the full depth into the slab. So this last one or two millimeters, I'm just gonna do with a hand plane.
Now I know what you're thinking, some of these joins look a little rudimentary. The gaps are too big, you're gonna see them, it's gonna to be too obvious. So what I'm gonna do is fill with epoxy from this side. All right, I'm gonna change my approach here because I don't think pouring from this side is gonna be able to fill the entire cavity on this end. So what I'm gonna do is mix up some of the sawdust from this mobile with some epoxy. And hopefully that'll remove a little bit of its viscosity and then pour it from this side and then hope that it doesn't just run through down this end. Well, this project took much longer than I was expecting. It feels like forever since I've been at this part of a video. So as you saw, I ended up connecting the top to the legs using those four figure eight clips, and they worked really well. I spent days trying to work out how I was gonna attach this top to the legs, considering this reveal here from the side. The problem is that this is a very big piece of wood, so it's gonna move dramatically during seasonal changes and this mobile is a different species of wood. So the two of them are gonna move differently. So I had to put something in that allowed a lot of movement. So what I came up with is leaving a small gap between the slab and this reveal. So as the slab changes width, it's gonna pull these legs in and out. So this gap here is enough to allow it to do that. I put five coats of polyurethane on the top and two coats on the legs. And it was interesting how Merbau, a traditionally good hardwood, seemed to look fantastic after two coats, but the silky oak, a softwood, needed five before it felt like it was a nice, solid, decent looking finish. And I guess that makes sense why you hear that some woods are better to work with than others. And in this case, the hardwood finished up fantastic, where the softwood needed a little more work. So this whole table is done. I really like it. This is its final resting place here in the lounge and I think it just complements the room really nicely. Before I go, I just wanna mention that myself and two other YouTubers, Colin Black Byron and Andrew Jones, will be in Adelaide on the 5th of November for the Adelaide Maker Fair. This is Australia's version of the Maker Fair that you've seen in the US and Europe and I'm really excited about being on one of the panels. The three of us will be talking on the Sunday afternoon, so if you are going to the Maker Fair, please come say hello. If you can't make it, what we're gonna do is the day before, Saturday the 4th, we'll put on a live stream, so if you have any questions for the three of us, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Well, that's it from me. My name is Robin Lewis. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please go ahead and click that thumbs up, and if you feel like I've earned it, I'd love for you to subscribe. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you guys soon. What do you think of my deep squat, Johnny? <laughs>